In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create captions just like this inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. It's honestly much quicker and much more simple than you would expect. So let's get into it. Now, in order to create the captions for this, we want to find the text window. So we'll go to window and make sure we can see text. So text is not currently enabled. So we'll select that and that should pop up here but let's move that somewhere more friendly and less in the way. From here, you want to go ahead and select create transcription. We want to select our language and you can see there's quite a few languages now available for Premiere Pro. So you've got Mandarin, Cantonese, Spanish, German, French, Japanese, so many more, but this is English UK. So I'm going to do that. You can see we can do speaker labeling so we can have separate speakers or we can have just one file. I'm just going to go for one file because it's just myself. And then you can target specific tracks. So if your dialogue was on one, but you had music on two, then you could just select audio one and it would only select the dialogue and ignore the music. This is really handy because if you're editing over music and you can hear people singing in the music, then all of a sudden those words will be put into your captions. So by enabling just the one track, it's ignoring those other tracks. It's really great, but I've only got the one track, so I'm just gonna leave it on mix and I'm going to press transcribe. Now in older versions of this captions workflow, Premiere Pro used the internet to do this. So you had to be connected to the Wi-Fi, otherwise it wouldn't work. But Premiere no longer does that. So you don't need to be connected to the Wi-Fi, which is super handy if you have poor internet service or you simply just don't have access to the internet. So let me just review this to make sure that is correct. Simply put, a match cut is a bit of so you can see it got match cut wrong. It just had match. So we can just double click and add cut in. Simply put, a match cut is a way of transitioning one shot to the next. And what makes a match cut different to you can see it got it slightly wrong there again because of my slightly weird accent. And what makes a match cut? Now it has simplified it. It has gone what makes it much different, but grammatically that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to change that to, and what makes a match cut? Makes a match cut different to any. We can delete the much. A match cut different to any other type of transition is it carries one element from so I've only got those 10 seconds of video. That's why it dramatically cuts off. But if that looks good to you, then now you can just select these dots and go create captions. Now caption preset, you can go for a subtitle default, teletext default. I'm just going to leave it at subtitle default. We'll go into preferences and we're going to change the style. If we have any styles pre-installed, we can change the maximum length in characters. So how many words do you want? So I'm going to keep this quite short and dynamic because YouTube captions are quite short and dynamic. Minimum duration in seconds, we'll pull that down and then we'll go for single lines so that it's not spreading across two lines. Then we'll create captions and Premiere Pro is just going to take a second to turn that transcription into your captions. Now these will be quite boring captions to begin with. They won't be the prettiest, but we can animate these and have fun with these in a moment. And Now that's fine, that works, the captions are there, but they're very boring, very dull, and I personally wouldn't look at these, they're not very dynamic. So let's go to one of these, and we're gonna go into the Essential Graphics panel, so make sure Essential Graphics is enabled, which is here. We're gonna select that, we're gonna change the font, so I go for Monster at Black, that is the font that I use. We can increase the size of this if we wanted to. We can also change the position of this so we can actually nudge this up a little bit. So rather than being at the very bottom, we can put this a bit higher up so that it's a bit more eye catching. Alternatively though, we can just completely change the zone and then bring it down a pinch from there. So that works. Then we can go down and we can add a background to this if we wanted to. So we can change the color of this. Let's go for something really dynamic. There's a nice yellow in the frame. So we're gonna select a yellow. We're going to increase the opacity of that. We'll increase the scale of that. And we're going to round the corners off to make that really nice. And we'll change the fill color to black and delete the drop shadow. So once you've created the look of your captions, we can now just go ahead and create a track style. So all we need to do is select a non create style and we'll call this yellow. So now when we scrub through, all of these captions are in this yellow track style. So now that we've got our captions created, how do we animate this? Well, simply put, we just need to convert these captions into graphic files. 
So in order to do that, we'll just highlight all of those captions, go to graphics and titles, and we'll select upgrade caption to graphic. And as you can see, that's going to convert those subtitles, those captions into a normal text layer. Now from here, we can just treat this like any other layer in Adobe Premiere. So we can add some scale effects, we can add some position effects, we can do whatever we want because these are no longer captions, these are just text files. So we'll just select one of those text layers, scroll to the beginning, pull the scale down to 0%, create a brand new keyframe on scale at the very beginning of that clip. Then we'll go three or four frames to the right, increase to 110, then we'll go another three or four over to the right and pull that back down to 100. Now, when we play this back, you'll notice that animates from a very weird point of view. And that is because the anchor point is off. The anchor point is not in the center of the file. Now, this is the anchor point. This is what I'm talking about. This is where this is animating from. Now, in order to improve this, we are just going to move that anchor point down into the middle of this text layer. Now, you could drag this, but if that's not working, then you can just go to anchor point and adjust that so it sits in the middle. But of course you are going to have to move the position down just to get that back to where it first started. So now when we play this back, you can see that pops up exactly the way that we want it to. So from here, just copy the motion. So we'll go Command C on the keyboard. That is a Mac. If you're on Windows, it is Control C, not Command C. Then we'll just highlight all of our other text layers or our graphic layers, and then Command V or Control V to paste. Now, when we play this back, you'll notice they've all got this really cool scale bouncing effect. And there you go. That is how you create really dynamic captions inside of Adobe Premiere Pro 23. So thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.